Uh, We're ready. Our connoisseur is, is just so happy today to be in the studio of Anne Elise Primaton. She is a renowned glass artist, has been so for more than, I would say, 15 years after having a very, very successful career as a translator in England. But now we move on to what, what Anne is doing now, which is, of course, creating beautiful art glass pieces here in the Washington area. We're going to go through Anne's studio, which I always find to be something very interesting to find out where people work. It not only gives you an idea as to what they're doing, but it also sometimes opens that mirror to the soul of the art that they create while here. Without any further ado, we're going to let Anne start out letting, telling us how she creates these beautiful art pieces. Okay, the, this is my kiln, and uh, sometimes I have to use larger kilns, but uh, I can fire work my glass in here up to 1600 degrees, and that's the maximum temperature I'd use anyway for things like casting. And uh, I mainly, now I'm concentrating on work with um, made of glass powders, and this is what I use making glass powders. This can be a very small bowl, and uh, I'd use a mold. This is, these are molds that I make myself out of um, a special paper, which is um, heat proof, and uh, it can be fired in a kiln up to 1500 degrees. And I place the glass on top of it, either this way or inside, and then I have to let it, the term is called slumping, in order to And that's form how it. you create the that's how actual I, bowls. Yes, I have a bowl, which, which I'll show you. And uh, so this is worked with glass powders, and this is the actual powder itself. That's the consistency. And I almost use it like watercolour, because this is clear. It looks white, but um, it is clear. Now, what does that um, mix with, I guess, other mediums? Um, I mix it with, with other colours. So I'll put, add a little bit of blue, turquoise, any other colours, and uh, then I can get multicoloured pieces. This is just a sample so this that is I did. put in, and then it melts. And yes. Ah, oh, okay. Because I'm thinking um, in terms of mixing with water this, or something. Um, this is, I can mix it with water if I want to paint it onto a sheet of glass. And uh, then I get a completely different effect. So this is my kiln shelf. And this is where I put the glass powder directly. This is another fiber paper shelf, which is, um, and I also put a sheet of special paper on top of it, which. Um, gives the back of the glass a slight mm -hmm. sheen and a lot of smoothness. And uh, then I make my shapes, I make all these shapes with different things like paint brushes. <coughs> so I'll use maybe the paint brush, I'll use little sticks to make small holes and then I have some, some larger tools where I actually shape the powders. One of the things that people, <coughs> I know that I've been asked about glass artists is the fact that the temperatures are very hot Yes. while you're working with these things. So when that comes out of the kiln, is it, how long is it before you can start to work with it? It's, it's a long time. You have to cool, gla um, cooling glass is a, a technique, it's called annealing, and you have to control the cooling. This, this kiln actually, <coughs> Um, I, when I cool the glass, I, I set the rate at which I want it to cool. So if I have a thick piece of glass, this isn't very thick, I'll show you some over there that's thick. If I have something an inch thick, I'm going to have to cool it for about 24 hours. And it's going to have to cool very, very slowly in the beginning, and then slightly mm. quicker later on. Very good. And, um, and this, this is another technique that I do, by the way, with, um, I have layers of silver in between layers of glass. And for this one, instead of the glass powders, I start off with, with a sheet of clear glass. And then I place my silver on top and I colour it with glass powder and with also glass frit. Now uh, that's which all prepared at one glass. time or do you do that in increments? Um, I, I, this is just two firings. And then other pieces, which I'll show you, are done with several firings. And then I just keep adding layer after layer and uh, build it up. This is, um, these are just samples. Um, I was talking about 
using glass like water, watercolour, the glass powder in particular. And that's how that comes out. And um, yes, this has to be controlled very precisely, the colour, because um, in fact you, you use a lot of clear glass with this, a lot of clear glass powder and crushed glass, and then you have little touches of uh, little additions of the coloured glass. If you put too much it becomes very, very dark. And then the quantity of glass that you use as well is very crucial to the, to the appearance. So I'll, I'll show you some other pieces. Now you have other things <coughs> here. I'm looking at this um, particular piece of equipment. What do you do with this one? Uh, this is a polisher. Um, this is a piece of glass I'll be working on. I'll be cutting it with this saw. And then once it's cut, the edges have to be smooth. Smooth, and that's when you do And um, this, this polisher has diamond pads. This is actually a, the final polishing pad, but I have these diamond pads here which range from very coarse to fine. Fine, depending what the texture and is. Because they're diamond, the coarse one actually costs $500 just for one polishing pad. So, <laughs> so that the, means you want to really get a lot of use out of it. Yes. <laughs> so say with these pieces, which I'm still working on. I've smoothed the edges here and polished them a little bit and yeah, they'll, these are very they'll need smooth. more mm -hmm. they'll need a little bit more work and then they'll get the final polish, polish over there. Over there. You can also try now and polish. Now the smooth finish actually just comes from the glass <coughs> cooling down. This is yes, not polished. From firing up to a certain temperature and from having glass at more or less the same um, thickness, thickness together. Thing. Um, sometimes I, I work it differently though. This, this saw will cut through an inch thick of glass and it'll cut quite large pieces. It's actually a tile saw, but you can, you can buy diamond blades, especially for glass oh. with it. I see another and, little uh, instrument over here that looks sort of uh, strange. Now that's one, what do you do with that? The, these two machines are grinders and they use different types of bits. These are the parts that actually do the grinding on them. So with something like this, if I don't like the shape <coughs> of the holes, I can use either this top one to get very small holes, or I can use this one just for the edges of it, and I can use the polisher just on the edges as well. So it's very flexible. And then if I have really small detail, this I use for signing my work, but I can also use, use that to all the attachments. That fine. I have all these attachments on this, so I can make small detail and I can also engrave with this. And uh, this, this is the uh, thick glass I was talking about, and this, the edge of this will need to be polished, but this is going to be a component in, <coughs> in a larger piece of uh, glass in another picture and you can see the layers here. The layers so, here. so that was this several has, firings. This has had about five firings and then I'm just adding more colour and more silver. These, these are layers of pure silver that I'm in, enclosing between, um, encasing between layers of glass and uh, it really is necessary to colour it with either crushed glass or glass powder just so that you can see the silver. Yes, and these are some pieces I'm working on here as well. This is something I used to do and um, was in demand a lot. So these are all small squares and I'm going to join them together in the kiln with a little border of clear glass and then it will be one, be one large composite panel. piece. And uh, these are also pieces in progress. This is a sheet of, of glass powder uh, where I've made the holes and also made this little border and then I'm going to lay it on top of some other glass which I still have to work on and this will be sandblasted so that it will be a matte finish to match this and then this will be a, a wall piece and I'm going to engrave some writing on writing it as on well it. to do with piece and, uh, and this is another similar piece. Well we have taken a very quick tour through Anne's studio and uh, if you were interested we will be talking with Anne about the pieces that she creates so if you're actually if your palette has been wet with this join us on uh, Anne's art side so that you can see some of the beautiful pieces that she creates in this studio thanks so much Anne for sharing your studio